Good morning, friends. What a joy it is to come together this day on this beautiful day to worship. And wherever you're joining us, you who are here in this space and all of us women, we are all looking good this morning, right? Whether we are moms or persons who are nurturing our young or just women in different places and spaces who are sharing our faith in the way that God has gifted us to do so. Today is that day that we just celebrate who we are. And I want to thank those who are joining us online. We hear that Facebook is not streaming well, so it's hard as if you're on Facebook. There's a message coming out to you shortly. Um, YouTube is working well. So once you get to YouTube, if you can check in there, that we know that you've made it there. And it is just really good to have you worshiping with us this morning. And we'll get it out to Facebook a little later this, this morning. Well, Ruth, you are back from maternity leave. Yay. And we are thrilled for you, Elijah, and big sister Lily. And we welcome baby brother Finn in February. And um, yeah, life is a busy mom. And back to ministry and back to work, it's just really great to have you here. And it's great to be here. You know, my Mother's Day gift this morning was that Finn was still asleep when I left. <laughs> It's Amen. a great one. It was a great gift. I'll take it. Uh, but it's so great to be back. You could see some pictures earlier of they, they decorated my office in Christmas. And they, they got me. I walked past. I'm like, there's more sparkle in my office than normal. And sure enough, uh, they, it was such a great way to come back. Uh, and it's so great to be among you guys all again. I don't know if you missed me, but I missed you. So, we missed you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we also want to say thank you to Step Ministry for the cleanup work that happened. And they uh, planted a garden, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. On last Saturday. And it's just wonderful and beautiful. And thank you all for the work that you're doing there. Thanks. May is a busy month with lots going on. On May 21st, we have our Curry concert coming and the band Chosen is on deck to worship with us. We also have Heidi, who will be sharing a bit of her testimony as we join Sanford Rising. And that weekend, all of the activities as we remember both um, the, the happenings of the flood of 2020, um, the rebuilding that's gone on, and the needs that still exist in our community today. And then on May 22nd, we will have a time where we um, just celebrate Heidi and her ministries. So we've got a big weekend coming up. Absolutely. And we also tonight will be having youth group and kids zone together, kids night out, at 6 p.m. in the hub. If you could see my hands, there is spray paint all over them. And that is because of our craft tonight. I oh, promise dear. they are not <laughs> handling spray paint. I did that for them. But we have lots of good stuff uh, ready for some special crafts for our moms. I'd also like to remind you that there is going to be a, there's a nice photo opportunity in the parlor for all mothers, and there's a super secret other photo opportunity that I can't talk about, but it's right outside this door, and you'll understand when you come see me after service. I love it. So photos need to be taken following worship today. Well, this morning we are excited to be welcoming Brian Gulliver, who has joined our staff here at Midland First. He is, yay, <laughs> he is um, helping us with all of our tech needs from, from sound to lights um, to working with our video. He also comes with those gifts of understanding how to um, put recorded video together to, to create videos so that continues to give us an opportunity that um, we look forward to using those gifts as well as we are excited and anxious to introduce him to our podcast room so that he can also come alongside us with some of that to us, newer technology. Well, as we come to worship this day, um, it's just a great day to celebrate the ways that life begins anew and afresh, to celebrate the women of faith who have led us and nurtured us and guide us and to lean into our God who calls us to take a step aside from the busyness, the worries, the stuff of every day and to wholly soak in his glory and name. 
Come, let us worship. Oh, we have one more. I'm oh, sorry go. you did no, such you're a good, so good. lead you're in. So good. Here go, go, go. I am. Next Sunday, May 15th, is going <gasps> to be our Grad Sunday. And so that will be celebrated at our second service. So there will be a video being shown during our first service. Um, we want you guys to all come out and support our graduates for 2020. And I'm so glad you did this because following worship, we also have coffee. We also have coffee in the parlors. So join us for a time of conversation. All Thank right, you. are we ready? We're ready. Let's worship. Good morning once again, everyone. Please stand and greet each other as we prepare for our opening hymn.
Deb Jason, and I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you out there on this beautiful day. I was blessed about 25 years ago to have my first daughter, and um, I have two of them that have grown up in this church, and I just want to thank all of you because probably at one time or another you've actually touched their lives, perhaps without even knowing it. Let's begin the call to worship. See what love has given to us that we should be called children of God. By this we know love that Jesus Christ has come in flesh and lived and died and that God's love might be made plain among us. Therefore, beloved, let us have not only in the word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. Because we love one another, we know that we have passed from death to life. This is the victory that has overcome the world through Jesus, our risen Christ. Thank you. 
Weave me, Lord. This morning, long, and I always feel like it's a long time before I actually preach the sermon that I choose um, the sermon title. But that title of the tapestry we weave, um, it has been good for me to think about this last week. And in that, um, I, I created kind of a space here of items that have been woven for me in my life. And in that, I realized, um, as I created that space, just how many more pieces of tapestry that I have that could be a part of this. Um, but in the middle down here, you will see, um, in the middle is, is a, an item that was crocheted for me. And at the bottom of it is actually crocheted into it the word faith. Is that crazy? Um, I can't imagine having the ability to do that. And um, I have the gift of faith. And so it's a reminder when I wrap up in that, when I look at that, when I remember the person who's praying for me, um, it gives me courage and strength. The next to it is a prayer blanket. And we have those. We have a tin of a basket of them. We've got tons of them that you have created and made full of love and prayers to give to persons who are in need. And the blanket on the right there is um, given to me um, in my journey as pastor to hold me close. And um, it's got the words of amazing grace. What great words to remember this day. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. The other two items, and I'll speak a little bit more of them when I get to my message, are my mom's. Both my mom and my mother-in-law are both amazing seamstresses. And growing up, I'm not sure I had, I don't even know how many items of clothing I had that were not homemade. And in that, my mother-in-law also, an amazing seamstress, she too clothed me. And so I just have a couple of items that they created. And then I thought, well, what stole do I wear this morning? And I was going to wear a different stole because the youth, and I've worn it before, made myself and the other district superintendents whom I was serving with a beautiful red stole with words on it that emulated who we are. And then I thought, but you know, this stole... <laughs> This still, too, is a piece of tapestry woven for me by a dear friend who, um, when I was ordained, we were asked to make banners. And I was in ministry with her when I was in the Holland area. And she made my banner similar to this with the simple words that say, come, now let us worship on it. And in that, um, there was enough leftover scraps <laughs> that I asked her if she could create me a stole, and she is the one, too, who has woven this stole. So this morning, as we walk into this day of faith, who are the women, who are the people that have woven their lives into you? And for me, one of those people who has woven much into us and into our children is Abby Shepherd. She has been a part of our children's ministry here at Midland First for eight years. She has done an incredible job with our online ministry and making sure that our kids through COVID and our families through COVID have known God's love and God's grace. It is also tough for me this morning to share with you that Abby is seeing a shift in where God is calling her. And she has turned in her resignation as director of our children's ministry with Midland First UMC, effective May 19th. I am so grateful for Abby's passionate servant's heart for loving each one of us and holding each one of us close. Her ministry will be missed more than I can express this morning, but we are excited for her. Recently, this last December, she received her health coach certification, and she is passionate, continues to be passionate about helping people to transform their lives by improving their health. So this morning, our prayers go with Abby as she shares this news with us, as I share this news with you, that as we all seek to journey and walk with our God, we may know his love. A psalm came to my heart this week as I shared this news with our full staff. The words are, our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not all headlong 
for the Lord holds us by the hand. God will continue to guide each one of us in this journey of loving others well. I want to celebrate a bit this time, this morning, as we, we anticipate our offering. On Easter morning, we took a special offering for um, the City Rescue Mission of Saginaw and for Shelter House. Your gifts came in at around $7,362. My other piece of excitement is that was also where we asked for our community Good Friday service donations to go, and our community Good Friday service brought in $411. So I am excited that we are able to continue to come alongside and to bless the people in our community in this way. Children are on my heart this morning. The children of Haiti are on my heart. We got word this last week of devastation and just the trials and tribulations that we face each day don't even compare. Don't even compare to the unjust living conditions, the poverty, the pain, the suffering that our brothers and sisters in Haiti endure. They are heavy on my heart. Our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine continue to be weary on my soul. And my guess is there's places and spaces where you know people, where your heartache goes, where your longings rest. And in that this week and in our news, much has been shared about our children. And we can discuss right and wrong of decisions being made in our political world. But my invitation to you on this Mother's Day, on this day that we have celebrated those who have loved us, who have poured faith and life into us, I pray that we will boldly ask ourselves, we will boldly ask ourselves, how are we passionately caring for and loving our children, the ones that we see and are in our homes, in our neighborhoods, on a daily at the grocery store, we see them. And those ones who are hidden in darkness and in corners, gracious God, open our eyes that we may love. Will you pray with me? Gracious and merciful God, Thank you for your holy presence here this day. I would love to come to awake any morning, especially Mother's Day morning, to no more sorrow, no more pain, no more heartache, no more. But gracious and merciful God, in the midst of this life, you did not promise us no troubles, no rain. But you did promise that you would always be with us and walk with us and give us the strength and the courage that we need. <laughs> oh, amazing God, with the cry of the child in our midst. May we hear this voice and may we hear the voices of our children. May we not silence them. May we not hide them. May we not ignore them. But gracious God, on this beautiful day, may we, as your people of faith, proclaim your goodness and mercy. And in the abundance that you have blessed us with, may we bless, may we reach, may we love, may we pour your love passionately and compassionately in our neighborhood, in our homes, and around your globe. Gracious and merciful God, I thank you so much for the people who you have called to be the body of Christ that we know is Midland First United Methodist Church. And as we humbly offer you this day the offerings of our lives, the offering of our gifts, as we humbly give to you the offerings of the first fruits 
of the finances that you have blessed us with. May we give in delight of who you are. May we give as we seek to be your light and your hope in those places of darkness. May we give as people who are witnesses to the risen Christ. And we pray all this as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Carolyn Choir. Thank you so much, Grace. Chancel Choir, thank you so much for your music. And Adrian, thank you so much for the ways that you just draw us together. This morning, as we lean into the book of Acts and continue to reflect on what it means for us to be witnesses of our faith, we come to a space of witnessing another healing moment. I invite you to hear these words from Acts 9, verses 36 to 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him and the request. Please, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the windows stood, all the widows, all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes. And seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon a tanner. Will you pray with me? O oh, gracious and merciful God, as we hear these words read, may we open our hearts and our minds to receive that gift that you have prepared for us this day. And gracious God, with the words now spoken, May you be given honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The tapestry we weave, it's funny because as we read this story, I'm guessing each of our minds goes to different places. I was really pleased, um, I think it was yesterday, that Amy Rye Fisher reached out to me and she reminded me of the beautiful window that is in... Um, in the parlor area, Memorial Garden side, that shows um, is, is there to celebrate our women, and in particular this window is to celebrate Dorcas or Tabitha. So I hope after worship you'll take just a minute to check out both her window as well as the other windows of our people of faith. When I read the story of Tabitha, as I said earlier, I immediately go to my moms, who were my seamstresses. I think of my mom, who was willing with every wiggle and move because my clothing had to move with me because I don't stay stationary very well or very long, and I had to have things wiggle right. And so as she made clothing for me, she'd always be like, okay, does it move okay? Can you wiggle in it? And she'd fix it. She'd alter it so that things wiggled and moved just right. I realized just how blessed I was to be able to have a mom who was willing to fit clothing to me like that because you can't go to a department store and find that same great fit too often. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, she, she made clothing, but in, in her later years, she did tons of altering for persons. She hemmed up more than one or two wedding gowns. She hemmed up 
um, pants for those who were short, and she let out pants for those who were tall. And as people gained weight and lost weight, she worked to alter those pieces of clothing so that they would continue to fit. In this picture, a Mother's Day just a few years ago, you have my mother-in-law on the far left, my daughter in the middle, and then me on the right. And do know that as much as this is a picture of my mother-in-law, I'm wearing a shirt that my mom made, trying to depict all of us. But you know, there's more to Tabitha, and there's more to my mom's than just sewing. They were women, they are women, who have shaped lives because they've used their gift of sewing to love on others. They have also chosen to use the gifts that they've been given so that others' journeys might be made easier, that others might know laughter, others might know joy, others might know one who comes alongside and cries with in the moment of brokenness, that those who are in sorrow and despair know that they are never alone. Tabitha, she wove together garments. And in weaving together those garments, she began to weave people's lives together. She allowed people to know just how valuable they are and what a valuable part of the community they are. Tabitha, she was a disciple of Jesus Christ. She was one who followed Jesus. She was one of few women identified as a disciple of Jesus Christ. She was a witness to the resurrection story and sought to live that witness out in her faith and in her life. I appreciate these words from the Psalms 1924 used in a book on women of the Bible to describe Tabitha. The words go like this, and may we too take them to heart as we seek strength to live out our faith. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May all that we do May all that we do in faith and glory to our God be done to reflect God's mercy as we live out our lives in words and action. Tabitha, she was also devoted to good works, to acts of charity. As we seek to witness to our faith, it comes out in how we respond to circumstances. It comes out in how we respond to others. It comes out in all of the things that we do. Matthew 6, 3 through 4 says, When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Caring for one another. Caring for the least of these. Caring for the lost, the wounded, the foreigner, the widow, our children are all cries of God that we might find. Not that we might find. Earthly pats on the back. Or kind words or applause given. But all of this we do, that as we walk with our God, our eternal, our eternal joy and acknowledgement is in seeing the kingdom of God revealed on earth as it will be in heaven in all of its fullness and grace. And we know that one day, one day, we will be with our God and our prayer is to hear our God say, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant, Tabitha. Tabitha was raised from the dead that others could believe. Tabitha helped others see Jesus in her living, 
in her sickness, in her dying. After Tabitha dies, the women care for her body and start the process of preparing her for burial. They place her body for a moment in the upper room, and when Peter comes and in his prayers awakes the soul of Tabitha, it's a miracle. We cannot explain it. We don't understand it. But what we do know is Tabitha is given one more chance at life to love and to care for, and in awakening her from death, others too come to believe. You know, we too claim this new life. We too claim this new life. Yes, last week I shared that image of a caterpillar crawling and dying to self in the cocoon and rising to new life. It's a symbol in nature. It's a symbol in the everyday ordinary that gives us that example of new life in Jesus Christ. And each one of us are called. What does it mean to die to self? What does it mean to die to our earthly gains that we might receive the kingdom of God in fullness of grace? What is it that's keeping you crawling on the ground rather than allowing yourself to die in the arms of Christ? That Christ might pour his love and goodness and forgiveness into you. The words from Romans 2.20 exemplify our call to ministry. And it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And we know this is a process. We know that John Wesley gives us that invitation to go on to perfection. And so we humbly seek each day to come before our God And allow God's love to help us let go of that which we fear the most. To help us let go of those places of darkness. To help us let go of that which we don't know that we might be in God's arms. And in that, in dying in Christ, we might allow the breath of God to fill us that we can more boldly walk and grow in his mercy and grace. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. So what is your resurrection story? Where and how are you witnessing to the faith that God has shown before you? It's funny when you look into a lot of commentaries about this scripture, you hear a lot about Peter. Just before this piece, Peter healed Ananias and Lydia. Ananias had been bedridden for eight years, and Peter said to him, Ananias, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up, make your bed. And immediately he got up, and all of the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Peter came as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Peter came as one when Christ was on his way to the cross, denied him three times. Peter came as one who knew Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and yet even in knowing that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, he still blundered and made mistakes, and yet he preached that sermon to the community after Christ's death and resurrection, and 3,000 were baptized. When Tabitha dies, the community of faith immediately knows what to do. They immediately know to whom to run. And they run to Peter and say, Peter, come. Peter, come. We've seen Christ in you bring that living Christ to us. And Peter, come. For Tabitha has died. So where do you run? Whom do you go to? Who are the people of faith? And yes, this morning I've talked about women of faith. And yet, folks, we are people of faith. Men and women of faith who know our God. Who are intentionally working together to build the kingdom of God. When you find hardship, when you find trials, when you find struggles and tribulations, where is it? To whom do you run? I'm reminded in this tapestry that we call life that, that the finished side of the piece of artwork is absolutely beautiful. But if I could see, yeah, this is a piece of fabric covering it up. 
If I could see the back side of this piece of tapestry, there would be knots and there would be frayed edges and there would be brokenness. When you are seeking eyes to see, whom do you look to? I remember growing up a woman by the name of Aunt Holly. She was... Um, members at the church that my dad served in Hampton, Illinois, and at that point I was pretty little. But I knew then what I know now, and that is Aunt Holly was a gift to my mom. As I've grown up and as we've talked about Aunt Holly, my mom says, you know, Aunt Holly, whenever we would go there, or she says even in later years as I would call, she would always say, give me just a minute. She would work to stop whatever she was doing. Maybe pour a cup of coffee for herself and you. And in that, stop and take time. Aunt Holly was a woman of faith. Aunt Holly was one who knew how to love. And for us kids, we remember Aunt Holly as the one who no matter what the holiday was, we were blessed with Tootsie Rolls. And so we always knew as kids that there'd be a special treat. So who is it? Where is it that you go to seek hope and wisdom? Many of you better than I remember Marilyn Clark. She was an amazing woman of faith. She was an amazing rock in this community, and I did not have opportunity to know her near as well as you do. And yet, I still have a small stack of letters, notes that she wrote to me encouraging me, notes of wisdom, notes of God's word, notes of guidance. And I know from the stories told here that many of you, too, <laughs> I wasn't alone in receiving those notes, but you were also blessed. So where do you run? Where do you turn? Recently, one of our beloved friends who come to Friendship Lunch fairly regularly died. When I looked at her wall, the messages shared at the funeral home. I knew this, but I discovered it to a richer extent, and that she was a teacher. She was a teacher, and through Friendship Lunch, she would bring her community with her to make sure that folks were fed, and she would take meals with her to make sure that neighbors and family were fed. She was an avid reader. Whenever we had a rummage sale, she would sit in the book corner and just read and read and read. Whenever I came across a good book, I made sure to get her a copy because I know she just loved to read. She was a passionate soul. She was a quiet soul. And on her wall, there were words shared from her students of the ways that she had transformed their lives lives. Folks, we are the community of faith. We are a community of people seeking to witness to the ways that God has called us to live, to witness to the ways that we have seen the risen Christ. And as people of faith, we weave our lives together in ways that those words from Corinthians that talk about the hardship we feel when one rejoices, we all rejoice. And when one feels sorrow and pain, we all enter into that space. And we know it, and we feel it, and the tension is there, and we struggle. So who are the Tabithas in your life? who have poured love and faith into you. And as people of God, 
How do you allow yourself to be present and vulnerable that others too may reach out to you to seek you out for your prayers, for your courage, for your healing love? Our stories of life are woven together in an amazing tapestry. And in our connectedness, we find strength and we know God. And we have the courage and compassion and energy to witness to our faith. And as we know God and see God, we seek to heal the sick, to bind up the brokenhearted, and to reach for the lost. Peter was a disciple of Jesus Christ. Tabitha was a disciple of Jesus Christ. And we too are called this day to shine in words and in deed the love and forgiveness and grace that God has poured into us, that others too may witness, that others too this day may witness to God's mercy and love. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, I celebrate the people of faith who courageously live out the call on their lives that others might know your healing love. And gracious Lord, on this Mother's Day, we know there's woundedness and brokenness. And we ask if there's intentional ways that we can be your healing presence. Please use us. In Jesus' name, amen.
may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.